Silver Dwarf Sunday at Behavior Education. I'm Lori with Behavior Education and this is Tao Seti from Reach Out Reptiles. Today's been a busy day in addition to doing uh, animal behavior studies and animal training. I'm the director of Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary and we had a super busy day today. I actually have been out with the horses all day. I just came in from the barn after being out there with some visitors. And so I'm filming this a little bit later than usual, but that's kind of a good thing because Tau Seti is awake. It's about 8.15 Mountain Standard Time, um, Sunday night, August 25th, 2019. And in this edition of Super Dwarf Sunday, you're just gonna get to see some scenes of Tau Seti throughout the week. And I don't think we had anything different or exciting this week. I did spend one day where I spent extra time kind of messing with him and handling him and cleaning out his enclosure. And you'll see that he was fine with that for a while and then he decided that he had enough and he put himself away into one of his hides. And that's just fine. And that's how we stretch his comfort level a little bit and that's how we habituate him to activity. And probably the next time I do that, he'll be more comfortable with it and he'll stay out and engage with me longer than he did this time. So enjoy the video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And then tune in next week for our next episode of Super Dwarf Sunday at Behavior Education. Thanks, everybody. Concertina locomotion uses stationary body parts of the snake as anchors to push or pull the remaining body forward. Static friction is associated with the stationary part and is used as the reaction force that enables the forward progression. This works so long as the muscular induced forces do not exceed the static friction force. Neuromuscular control during concertina locomotion is very important. Concertina locomotion is very common in tunnels or burrows or tight spaces and the snake using this kind of locomotion alternates anchoring with folding, then anchoring with extension so that as one part of the body anchors against the substrate or tunnel wall, the other body segment immediately behind it folds like an accordion to pull that part of the snake forward.
everybody, it's Lori with Behavior Education, and I came in here to check on TC and thought I would give everybody an update in regards to how he's doing with behavior during this fifth week with us, and he's doing fantastic. He has not hidden in almost two weeks. He virtually doesn't use his hides anymore. He uses his humidity boxes, like this one right here. He really, really likes these a lot, and I have damp sphagnum moss inside, one on each end of his enclosure. And I typically find him either lying inside of it or on top of it when I come in and check on him. But he is now coming to the front of the glass whenever I enter the room. He is coming out of the enclosure at least part way when I open the door. And he casually sits there while I do what I need to do. In fact, um, I'm going to be cleaning this tub because he's made a little mess in it. And then I'll probably refresh his water and see uh, this humidity box was fine. I'll check his other humidity box. But as you can see, he's comfortable with me doing stuff around him. And uh, he's definitely within his comfort zone. And that wasn't the case the first week he arrived. He hit a lot. And so he's made some behavioral changes just because now he's habituated to me and the environment and these common things that I do all the time, like check on him, like open the enclosure to check the dampness of the moss, like check his water, like clean things. So he's very habituated to all that and he's very comfortable with all that. He's just hanging out here. He's tongue flicking. He's come part way out of his enclosure. It's possible that he's trying to see or smell if I have any food because we've been doing the target training and most of those sessions involve him following the target out of his enclosure. But he just ate a few days ago, so he shouldn't be hungry, even though I know he would probably eat if I tried to feed him again. Um, but I think snakes are kind of always at least casually looking to see if you have food. So I'm going to clean his tub out and do a couple of things. And then TC and I are going to spend some more time together. And just to let you know, I haven't been injured. The Colorado Springs Comic Con is going on this weekend for three days. I have a three-day pass. Um, we have to wear these wristbands, and when I checked in tonight, we were told under no circumstances take it off. If it looked like it had been removed um, or tampered with, they wouldn't let me back in. So I'm protecting it from the snakes, from the dogs, from the pigs, from the horses, and um, from my clumsiness so that I don't accidentally rip it off. So that's what that's about. I'm going to do some cleaning, and we'll be back with you in just a few minutes, won't we, TC? Okay, TC, I am back. I have your tub cleaned out. I put some water in the bottom in case you want to do some swimming in it. And I refreshed your other humidity box. I have a new paper towel roll for you. I'm just going to throw that in there with the other one and it'll give you something else to do. And you and I are going to sit down together and watch this new video that just came out from Reach Out Reptiles. Does that sound familiar? Let's check it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to Reach Out Reptiles. My name is Garrett Hartle, and this week's video is one that I've been wanting to do for a while. I don't know where I can set this where we can both see it. So I see a lot of people taking things like these big box pet stores and pick up an entire enclosure to set them up. Do you like this part? For the purposes of my facility here, I decided I could use a little desk buddy. So I went with this 20 long front opening enclosure right here. What that allows me to do is take a young reticulated python. TC got bored. He went back into his enclosure, moved around a little bit, and now he's sitting at the back with his body inside his coconut hide, but his neck and his head stretched out watching what I'm doing. And that was a great video from Garrett Hartle at Reach Out Reptiles. I'm going to just show you TC's current enclosure, which, by the way, he's in much sooner than he normally would be. Normally, I keep the snakes in a quarantine tub for three months. However, after just a couple of weeks, TC clearly wasn't completely happy in the tub. I could tell that he wasn't satisfied and content just living in the tub. And so I chose to go ahead and set this PVC enclosure up, which is four feet long, so 48 inches long. And it's 16 inches deep and 18 inches high. However, I don't have substrate in here or any live plants or anything organic or any bark or tree branches because technically he should still be in quarantine and I need to see 
what he's doing. I need to see if he regurgitates any meals, what, what that looks like. I need to see when he eliminates, when he produces species, urine or urates, what that looks like. He's got a naturalistic enclosure in that he can express his natural behaviors in here. He's a semi-arboreal snake that comes from a human environment. So he does have damp sphagnum moss in his humidity boxes in here that he can utilize. And he's got lots of stuff to climb on and perch on like uh, PVC perches and shelving and this tub that he likes to lay on often. And he uses 100% of this stuff at night. When I come in here in the middle of the night and check on him, he's actively climbing over his shelves, his perches, hanging and draping on this tub. He's able to express natural behaviors. He just doesn't have natural materials in there yet because I want to wait until he's technically out of his quarantine period to put anything in there that would make it difficult for me to see the condition of his urates, his liquid urine, his feces, or anything that comes out of his mouth, or he seems 100% healthy, he's eating well, he's eliminating well, and everything looks absolutely normal. But if anything changes or if anything comes up, I need to see that. And so for a little while, he's going to have an environment that allows him to be active while I can still clean it easily and see easily what is coming out of his body or coming off of his body. So I'll just show you what everything looks like in here real quick. So he's got a humidity box with damp sphagnum moss. He's got a PVC perch here, and that's a three quarter inch PVC. He has a water dish for drinking there. He's got two hides on this end. And he has a tub here that has a 3D printed perch from Specialty Enclosures design inside it with a little bit of water in the bottom. And then the other side of his enclosure, I know that scared you a little bit. The other side of his enclosure, he has a water dish, um, a couple of paper towel rolls that he can sniff and climb through, crawl through if he wants to. The water dish has a big area underneath that the snakes are able to crawl in and there's an opening on each side. He's got another humidity box, another hide here. He's got another PVC perch here and he has these shelves that he's able to lay in. As far as the bottom, he just has cloth in there. I usually use reptile carpet or a pillowcase or sheet material or something of that nature so that um, I can see what's going on. His enclosure card right now is just one that's got a photo of him. It has his name what type of snake he is, when he was hatched, who produced him, where he came from, and the date he arrived here. So TC has retreated into his coconut hide, probably because I have been doing much more with his enclosure making uh, this video tonight than is normal. I moved everything around. I was messing with things. I was very intrusive with the camera. I dropped some things near him when I was trying to put things back in and so he has decided he's had enough and he's going to retreat inside that hide until I leave him alone and that is fine because I've been in here now like 45 minutes making these different video clips and he's finally said enough's enough. I'm not curious anymore. I'm tired of your activity and I'm going to go take a break and he certainly has plenty of options to do that. I just can't believe that of the three hides, actually four hides he has in here, if you count underneath the water dish, that he has chosen that tiny coconut hide that I cannot even believe he fits in. But if that's what he likes, it's his choice. He has the choice and control to do what he wants in his enclosure and use what enclosure furnishings he wants to. I just think it's interesting that he's chosen the smallest possible hide and I'm always surprised that his whole body fits in there. All right, TC, I'm leaving you alone. Do you want to go back inside? What are you doing? What are you doing, silly? This is the beauty of removable perching. I didn't have to stress him out by grabbing him off the perch. I didn't really have to 
um, bother him. I just removed, he was already on this perch. And so I just removed the whole thing and took him out for the video. And that's why I really, really love having removable perching for the snakes because oftentimes they're much more comfortable if they're able to stay on the perching that they've already chosen to be on than if we grab them off of it and try to hold them in our hands or move them somewhere else. And as you can see this way, I can let him come to me. I'm allowing him to have the freedom to choose to touch me or not. He has the choice and control over whether he stays on the perch or whether he touches my skin or my clothing or comes towards me at all. And so he's choosing to do that on his own. And right now this position he's in is very relaxed. He's sort of in exploration mode and he's casually draping across my arm and across my shoulder. And this looks very different than behavior would look if he was stressed or afraid or very concerned about something that was going on. All right, TC. Do you wanna go back inside? Oftentimes, as you see, they'll anchor their tail around something um, as they explore in between moving locations. So he anchored onto this for a little bit um, and now he's totally on me. And so he went ahead and moved his tail off. So I went ahead and put the removable perch back in. I really don't actually know what he's doing right now because I can't see. It feels like he might be starting to kind of get around my neck. And that's something that I really don't allow the snakes to do just for safety reasons. Even snakes that don't mean to, if they um, get worried and start constricting tightly, they will hold on tight around whatever's convenient. And if that's your neck, that could be dangerous. So I don't allow the snakes to go around my neck. I'm okay with them sort of anchoring to my hand or anchoring to my arms. And I'm okay with them climbing around my shoulders. But if they start to go around my neck, just for safety reasons, that's something um, here that we don't allow. As you can see, Tau Seti is still fairly relaxed. He's tongue flicking in a slow manner. Um, his body movement is deliberate and slow. If he was scared and super concerned right now, he would either be freezing or he would be clasping, um, anchoring around my hands and fingers, clasping my arm very tightly um, to show his concern. And he is not doing that. He's sort of in climbing and exploration mode. And I'm gonna see if he chooses to stay on me, or if he chooses to go back into his enclosure. And I'm doing that by just putting him in close proximity to his enclosure while I still have him in my hand. And at no point was he anchoring around me so tightly that it felt as though he was constricting out of fear or concern he mostly just anchored on for security and draped across my arm and across my shoulders. And now he's chosen to go back into his enclosure. That was a great session for him. It was short, nothing bad happened for me, nothing bad happened for him. He was a lot calmer than the last time I held him like that. And so we're gonna call that a success. I wanna thank everybody for watching this episode of Super Dwarf Sunday at Behavior Education. I want to remind everybody that if you're interested in more information about reticulated pythons, including dwarf and super dwarf reticulated pythons, that this book by Sid James is a good starting point. I also recommend that you go to the Reach Out Reptiles YouTube channel. Garrett Hartle has many educational videos on there about super dwarf and dwarf reticulated pythons. And then he has many videos on there that are very educational and applicable no matter what type of snake that you have. Thanks for watching. Until next time, love your animals and we'll see you next Sunday.